In this next section, we're going to be talking about derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions. This lecture will focus on, on um, derivatives of polynomials in particular. So first, we're going to start by um, getting some simple derivative rules down. We have a rule for the derivative of a constant, and we want to see why this rule is true. So the rule says that the derivative d dx of c is equal to 0. So if we think about what we know about derivative, in that the derivative um, represents slope, if I have this function y equals c, and it's this horizontal line at c, I know that a horizontal line has slope 0, so this makes sense to be the derivative of a constant function. We could also prove this using the definition of the derivative. If f of x is equal to the constant c, then f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h, which is c, minus f of x, which is c, all over h, and we'd be looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of 0, which would give us 0. So we can prove this rule using both the definition of the derivative and just using what we know about slope. So just to look at a couple of examples, um, anytime we have the derivative of a constant, we're going to have um, the value be 0. So d dx of 17 is 0, d dx of pi is 0. So this is um, a common kind of problem that um, you'll see. You'll see pi or e or something that looks like it's a variable but is really a number thrown into a derivative problem, and you need to recognize that the derivative of those um, those kinds of um, numbers are also 0 because they're just numbers. Similarly, the derivative of something like the natural log of 2 is 0 because that's just a number, and the derivative of e squared is still 0 because that's just a number. So don't be fooled by something that looks a little bit different. So what about the derivative of just the function x? Well, here we've got the graph of y equals x, and we know that um, everywhere along this graph the slope is 0, so we can see just from the graph that the derivative of x is 1. We could also use the definition of the derivative and see that I'd have x plus h minus x, whoops, the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h minus x all over h, which would mean I was looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of h over h or of 1, so I can see from the definition that that is 1. So with these two rules, we can already take derivatives of um, a few kinds of functions. So we need a few more rules um, to be able to take derivatives of polynomials. So the main rule that we'll need to talk about is what is the derivative of a power? So if n is any real number, we'd like a rule for d dx of x to the n. So for this one, let's just consider first the derivative of something like x to the fourth, because we want to try to see why this rule is true um, using the, the definition of the derivative. So if I wanted to compute the derivative of x to the fourth using my definition of the derivative, I'd be looking at the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h to the fourth minus x to the fourth all over h. So I'd have to multiply all of this out and then get some cancellation. So we want to see what happens when we do that. So if I multiply x plus h to the fourth, um, I'm going to get x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4xh cubed plus h to the fourth, and then I'm going to have minus x to the fourth. So I didn't show all that algebra, but it would simplify down to this when we multiply x plus h to the fourth out. This would be all divided by h, so these x to the fourth would cancel, and I notice that in all of these terms, I have an h I'd be able to factor out. So I'd have h times 4x cubed plus 6x squared, oops, squared h plus 4x um, h squared plus h cubed, and I see that those h's would cancel, and I'd be left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 4x cubed plus 6x squared h plus 4x h squared plus h cubed. So I see that as h goes to 0, these three terms are all going to be going to 0, so I'm going to get the value 4x cubed. So this pattern that we observed here is what's going to happen anytime I um, look at doing this definition for the derivative of x to the n. 
So it turns out that our rule for the derivative of x to the n is that it's going to be n times x to the n minus 1. So this is an important power rule that we'll use a lot and will be important for us to take the derivatives of um, any polynomial. Okay, so a couple more rules that we need. Um, if f is differentiable at x and c is a constant, then it turns out that we can take the derivative of the constant times f as the constant times f prime of x. Okay, so any time I have a constant that shows up, I can always just pull that out in front and then take the derivative of what remains. So in a couple of examples here, practicing our, our power rule that we have, d dx of x to the n being n x to the n minus 1 together with now our constant multiple rule. Well here, here I just have 1 times x to the 8th. So I can use my power rule and say this is 8 times x to the 7th, or 8x to the 7th. If I wanted to take the derivative now d dt of 5 6 t to the 12th, well I'm going to have 5 6, that's my constant, times the derivative of t to the 12th. So I'm just breaking that up into the steps that we're doing. So this would be 5 6 times 12 t to the 11th. So after simplifying this, I'd have 10 t to the 11th. And don't let this last one fool you. Um, it might be tempting to say that that's 15 pi squared, but this is just 0, not 15 pi squared, since 5 pi cubed is just a number. Okay, It's common to see these sort of uh, tricky looking numbers that, that show up in problems. They're just testing that um, you know that the derivative of any number is 0. So pay attention um, and be on the lookout for those kinds of things. That those um, are just going to have derivative zero. Okay, so we need to put a uh, couple more rules together here and then we'll be able to take derivatives of polynomials. So the, the last rule that we need is we need to be able to add up um, terms and take the, the derivative of, of each term in a sum or each term in a difference. So it turns out that if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of the sum, <coughs> excuse me, of two functions, f and g, is equal to the derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function. And we also have that the derivative of the difference of two functions will be the derivative of the first function minus the derivative of the second function. And since polynomials are just made up of sums and differences of some constant times a power, all of these rules now allow us to take the derivative of a polynomial. So here I've got an example of one that I want to take a derivative of using my derivative rules. So g prime of w here will be the derivative of this first thing. Well that's going to be my constant 10 times the derivative of w cubed, which is 3w squared, plus, now I can take the derivative of the next term, the derivative of 8w squared will be 8 times 2w minus 5 times the derivative of w, with, which is 1. Um, plus, and now that last number, that's just 8 written as 2 cubed, that just has derivative 0. So we see that g prime of w is 30w squared plus 16w minus 5. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples. Okay, so here we have some examples that initially look like um, we don't have the rules that we need to be able to um, compute these derivatives, but with a little bit of work, um, we will be able to find the derivatives of the functions here that we, um, using just what we know so far. So here I have um, f of x is 2x plus 1, um, times the quantity 3x squared plus 2. Now I don't know yet how to take the derivative of a product, but I know that I can just use algebra and expand this out, and that will give me a polynomial that I can take the derivative of. So if I just multiply these two together, I'm going to have 6x cubed plus 4x plus 3x squared plus 2. And now I have something that I can take the derivative of using my rules. So the derivative of 6x cubed will be 18x squared when I multiply 6 times 3 and then times x squared, plus 4, the derivative of 4x, plus 6x would be the derivative of 3x squared, and then the derivative of 2 would be 0. Okay. So what about the second one? Well, it looks like I've got this quotient, and we're going to see later that there will be a special rule for us to take the derivative of a quotient, but 
perhaps there's another way that I can do this by doing some simplification first. So I notice that I have um, x's in all of these terms, so I'm going to do some factoring, factor out an x, and see this is x squared minus 6x plus 8, and look and see that the de denominator is x times x minus 2. But I'm not going to cancel these x's because I need to remember that um, by canceling them I would change the function that I'm looking at. So I just want to factor at the moment and then we can talk about how we're going to handle the next step. So this x squared minus 6x plus 8 can be factored into x minus 2 and x minus 4 all over x times x minus 2. So I can say that this function is equal to x minus 4 but only when x is not 0 or 2. Okay. It's not equal at those values, but it's equal to this function, um, except at these two values where it's not defined. So we could also think about drawing a picture here of our function h in this example. So at 0, there's going to be a hole at negative 4, and at 2, I'd have a hole at negative 2. So I see that this function is the line x minus 4, but with holes in two different locations. So when I start talking about the derivative here, I see that h prime of 0 doesn't exist, and also h prime of 2 doesn't exist. However, h prime of x, for x not equal to 0 or 2, would be the derivative of x minus 4, which is just 1. So the derivative of h is 1, for all x except at 0 and 2, as we can see from our graph. We see that everywhere along this graph except at these holes, the slope would be equal to 1. Okay, so now we have a couple more methods for um, getting to take the derivative. If we can um, simplify something into a polynomial, we'll be able to take its derivative. So we want to look at just one more example for this lecture. Um, a lot of times what we're interested in doing is finding the equation of the tangent line or um, answering some sort of question to do with a tangent line to our particular function. So here I've got a function g of x which is equal to 5x cubed minus 8x squared plus 3x plus 2 and I want to find the equation of the tangent line to g at negative 1. So to find the equation of the tangent line I'm going to have to find the slope as well as the y value. So I'm going to have to find my slope, which is g prime of negative 1, and I'm going to have to find my y value um, at that particular point, which is going to be g of negative 1. Okay, so I see that g prime of x is equal to 15x squared minus 16x plus 3, so g prime of negative 1 is equal to 15 times negative 1 squared minus 16 times negative 1 plus 3. So I just have to do a little bit of arithmetic here. So I get a sum of 34. So our slope is 34. And then I plug negative 1 into the original function g here and get g of negative 1 is equal to 5 times negative 1 cubed minus 8 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 plus 2 giving me negative 5 minus 8 minus 3 plus 2. Let's see, this is negative 14. Okay, so once we have our y value, as well as our slope, we can write the equation of the line. Okay, um, and the, um, the form of the equation of this line will be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 using that point slope form where y1 is going to be um, g of negative 1 so we're going to have y minus g of negative 1 equals our slope g prime of negative 1 times x minus a negative 1. So I'm just writing in it, in, um, it in this particular form so you can see that this is what we're going to um, be looking at each time. We're going to have y minus um, the value, our x value plugged into our original function, equal to our slope, which is the derivative at that particular point, times um, x minus x1, whatever our x1 value is. So here we have y minus our g of negative 1 is negative 14, equals our slope of 34, times x minus a negative 1. So we have y plus 14 equals 34 times x plus 1, 
is the equation of our tangent line. Okay, so um, next time we're going to be looking at derivatives of oops, exponential functions and also working with a few more applications um, of these derivative rules. Please let me know if you have any questions.